Hey, what's up guys, Sir Eminon here, and welcome to another video. So this is going to be another episode of Inside DB Rated, and today's matchup is going to be between Live Twin versus Sky Striker. So let's go ahead and get started with this matchup here without any further ado. So we're going to be seeing the Live Twin player taking the RPS win, and they're going to be choosing to go first in this matchup here. Not really anything too shocking. Their opening hand going first is going to consist of Imperm, Desires, Ash, Ghost Bell, and Kiss-A-Kill. So pretty solid hand. They have the starter, many different hand traps, which is what this deck is known for and a desire to back things up. Uh, Bell is a pretty interesting inclusion for this format. And then the striker opening hand going second is going to contain Mind Control, Rhoda, Desires, Valor, and Nibiru. So they have a couple hand traps themselves. Mind Con's pretty interesting as well, just like as a generic go second card uh, to help like maybe force uh, like Verone de Fleur negate or like various different like uh, Tribe of Gilderos kind of reactions. Uh, in this matchup, it's pretty interesting because like if you target Trouble Sunny, they can tag out into like just the evil twin Kissakill to still get pop, like the pop on your opponent's turn. Um, so it like, cuts off the draw, but it's not the greatest to combat that. Uh, but they have a couple hand traps plus engine too. So both players opening up pretty well. So Live Twin's going to start off by uh, normal summoning out Kissakill and then using an effect for a Lilla. They chose not to Valor this. So that makes me think that they're just going to hold for Nibiru. They might hold for the blue link too. Uh, we'll see how they play this out. They're going to link into Kiss-A-Kill and then activate the effect. And then they're going to just skip a step and go straight into the Lilo. And then they're going to activate the Link Lilo to bring back the Link Kiss-A-Kill. And then use the effect to draw a card. And then they draw into Droplet. And then they're going to link into the Trouble Sunny and then activate Desires. Interesting that they actually started with the plays first and then Desires afterward. Uh, they draw into Valor and then the Kiss-A-Kill Frost. So uh, this would be nice to have in Graveyard. Uh, they can get it into the Grave with Droplet. Uh, but yeah, they draw like they drew like a lot of hand traps here. Uh, we see they're not. I don't think they're playing cross out. I mean, it's possible they still are and just didn't banish any of them. But yeah, cross out is a card that like some lists are playing for this deck. Just since it's, like this deck already accommodates so many hand traps as is, uh, we see like the beer in the main deck too. So yeah, um, not really playing it here. That's like. That's why sometimes like it's good to Nibiru before they get the draw off of Kiss Kill, like in response to the Kiss Kill effect, um, just in case like they have Cross out. But I mean, it's like up in the air. I feel like a lot of people in general just aren't playing that card right now. So fair enough that they held this card. We're going to see the Live Tone player set two, and then they're going to go to the end of main phase where Nibiru is going to be activated. So that's going to go and tribute away the Trouble Sunny, and then summon out the token. And then Trouble Sunny Effect is going to go and send away the main deck brick. So they are playing it, and then they're going to send away the Nibiru. And then they are going to pass. So Striker is going to draw into Afterburner for turn. So this Mind Control, I don't think it's going to get a ton of value since like Striker doesn't really tend to play like Link Spider just for Verite. Uh, maybe it could be used for like a Halka Fibrax play, perhaps. Or just as a way to, like, I don't know make Zeke if they really wanted to, but they have after to clear it if they need. Uh, so they're going to Rota here, and that is going to be Ash Blossomed, actually. So I wonder if they knew the matchup prior, uh, because, like, I mean, against this hand, it's pretty solid, because now Desires is, like, it's going to have to get them somewhere. But if this was, like, Phantom Knights, then, uh, like, Ashing on Rota could be a bit preemptive. But they're going to Desires here, so they're going to go ahead and banish 10. Also, this is noteworthy because it means they're not on, like, Prosperity or anything. They draw a second Afterburner and an Eagle Booster, so uh, no starter card here. Uh, we see they're playing DD Chrome main deck as well. So Eagle Booster is pretty interesting because like we're in a pretty combo heavy format, and like this card tends to shine more in like the control matches, uh, which I mean this this is like a pretty good example of where Eagle Booster would be good. But yeah, they just don't have a way into their Striker engine. Also, if they're playing Desires, that means they're probably not playing Fusion Destiny, which is something to think about. But yeah, they're going to go ahead and Afterburner here to pop the token. Uh, this is good because now Frost can't just be like a free way into their, back into their engine via the links. So uh, pretty good. I mean, they have a hand trap still. It's just going to Afterburner and then pass. Uh, they draw Lilla for turn. That is pretty insane. So even if this Lilla gets Valor, they have Frost as this free summon. So that, that was probably the best possible top deck. Um, that or like just any of the Rotas to get to it. So they're going to normal summon out the Lilla. Does this get Valored? The answer is a yes. Uh, so like even though they can't like do any tricks with Droplet because there's no monsters, it doesn't really matter. Uh, they're just going to special out the Frost anyways, and then they're going to link into the Lilla. And then Lilla effect is going to go ahead and bring back the Kiss-A-Kill, and then the effect is going to be activated to draw one, so they're going to draw into another Lilla. So 
follow up for next turn. That's their last copy. And then they're going to go straight into the battle phase. So not really committing. Uh, this is four summons. So they're just trying to play around Nibiru again. I guess they're figuring that like if their opponent bricked, then they have hand traps. Um, but they actually just bricked on like dead striker cards and like mind control. But they do know the matchup because of the afterburner. Like if they didn't know about it before, now they know for sure. So they are going to just pass on this. So not ending on the trouble sunny either. I think they're pretty satisfied with like, you know, Imperium, Droplet, Bell, Valor, and like the Frost Draw. Oh, uh, they draw Imperium for a turn. So these cards are really just not doing a whole lot right now. They are going to just pass, because like if they use either of these cards, then like the links get value. Whichever other link gets value. I suppose you could um take the Kissicle, because like this can't summon back a link Kissicle, but like you can't do anything with it. Um yeah, like you can't really do anything anyways, so yeah, not really any point. So they're just gonna go and pass here. They draw into a Sunny's Snitch. So they can make a pretty big push this turn. Uh, Sunny Snitch is going to be activated to go ahead and search for Kissikill. They're then going to normal summon it and then go into Nightmare Unicorn. And then the little effect to bring back bring back the Kissikill. And then the effect is going to be used to draw a card. They're going to draw into Secret Password. They're going to go ahead and link off for the Trouble Sunny. And then they're going to go into the battle phase. Uh, they're going to imprim the Trouble Sunny just so it can't tag out in the battle phase to clear the damage threshold. Uh, so, I mean, I think, obviously, if you're live twin, you're fine with this, because they'll be on 300 life points anyways, and with the Sunny Snitch Burm, it's going to be tough for them to actually play their engine. So, yeah, they're going to bring them down to 300 life points. So, if they're not playing Fusion Destiny, actually, that makes Mind Control pretty interesting, because, like, this doesn't really help them make Verity Anaconda in this case, like, in, in this deck. I'm just trying to, like, think of their list in general. But, yeah, they're just going to pass. Uh, they are Terraforming for turn. That's pretty good if they still have Mystic Mind in their deck, um, which they should if they are playing it. So that is going to be a pretty decent way to stall until they can get back into their engine. So they're going to Terraforming. That's going to go ahead and add a copy of uh, nothing because they just scoop. Oh, okay. Um, so I guess they're just not main decking Mystic Mind. That is pretty interesting. So choosing to just play like a lot of hand traps. They play a Mind Control over like the Mystic Mind. Um, which is also a uh, choice that we haven't seen too much of. But we're going to go and see Live Twin take down game one. So, whoa, what's happening over there? <laughs> game two is going to go ahead and uh, get started here. So Live Twin's going to be forced to go first again. So their opening hand going first is going to contain Drone and Rockbird, Sunny Snitch, Forbidden Droplet, another Sunny Snitch, and Kiss a Kill. Pretty decent hand. Uh, like, they have the extender, of course, and then a couple of defensives. The striker hand going second is going to be Imperm, Rhoda, uh, Nib, Valor, and Widow Anchor. So drawing these three cards again. So I wonder if they're going to like use the hand traps the same way they did last time. So they're going to go ahead and kiss a kill, normal summon, and then activate the effect. They're going to summon out the treat. So yeah, not choosing to um, drop Valor here again. They chose to go for treat this time instead of the regular uh, Lilla, which is pretty interesting. I wonder what motivated that uh, decision change. But yeah, they're going to go and link into uh, the Link kiss -a kill and then Effects to bring back, and then they're going to summon out Lilla, and then Effects to bring back the kiss -a kill Effects to draw one. They draw the third Sunny Snitch. All right. <laughs> uh, over time, this is going to amount to a lot of damage, um, but yeah, that is not the, that's not what you want to draw. Uh, they're going to draw into, or sorry, search out Frost off of the Sunny Snitch, and then go into the Trouble Sunny. They're going to set and then they're going to pass into Nibiru again. Uh, Yeah, that is... I mean, it's like the same thing as last time, pretty much. So they're going to go ahead and Trouble Sunny to send away the Nibiru again. And they are going to pass. Uh, they draw Ray this time, so they're probably feeling better. Like, just in case Rota had got Ashed again, they would have been in the same spot as last time. Not anymore, though. So they're going to Rota here, and they are going to go and search for a copy of Rose. And then Joel is going to be activated in Resolution. Uh, Normal Summon out Ray next, and then they can activate Rose. So getting two bodies on the field here. They're going to go into the battle phase. Obviously, this token's on a zero, so it's going to go and attack over it. Uh, they're going to go ahead and attack with Ray, and then Ray tag out into the Hayate, and then Hayate attack directly. So they're going to activate the effect and then send from the deck to the graveyard a copy of uh, the Engage. 
So pretty interesting that they're sending engage here because like they could just send whatever their search target would be because not getting value off engage this turn anyways, which is something that we see quite a lot with striker is that like they send engage when they're not going to get mileage out of it this turn. Um, so that's pretty interesting. Maybe they're like going to hold it, but I mean, you could just Shizuku search it anyways. But yeah, they're going to go ahead and link for Kagari and then they're going to chain droplet in response to that. And then they're going to go for Zeke and then they're going to set to... And then, oh yeah, they can't Shizuku because they're under Droll. But, okay, I guess they want to, yeah, actually that makes more sense now that I think about it. Uh, scratch what I said earlier. I totally forgot Droll was uh, used. So yeah, this I guess makes more sense. Um, so they're feeling comfortable enough with like their Widow plus Imperm plus Valor that they didn't need the, they didn't think that they like needed the extra defensive card. Because um, like if they searched or like sent like a Widow and added it back, like that's another layer of interruption, but uh, it like makes their follow-up a little bit less powerful. So, yeah, no, this makes sense. I actually just forgot about Droll. So, scratch what I said. Uh, they're going to draw, I believe that was Imperm for turn. So, they're going to go ahead and activate the Sunny's Snitch for a copy of Alilla. Complementing this Frost pretty nicely, uh, which uh, they probably does know about because it was searched. So, Alilla effect, they're definitely not going to chain Imperm here. Or the Widow Anchor. Or the Veiler. <laughs> uh, yeah, they're just going to let this happen. So, they're going to go ahead and overlay into Sky Cavalry. And then they're going to go into the battle phase. They're going to attack into the Zeke. And then Ray is going to trigger here. So they're going to go and overlay for Downer Magician. And then Zeus. And then Zeus effect is going to be activated. They're going to chain Valor. They're going to chain Zeus again. They're going to chain Ray. And then they're going to chain Widow Anchor. Yeah, they're doing this instead of chaining the Imperm here. But, I mean, this works anyways. So they're going to target Zeus, and then they're going to go for Gari, and then effect to add back Engage. Yeah, so this ended up being pretty good. So, oh wow, I was just going to scoop there. That's pretty interesting. I'm not sure if it was worth scooping that early. Um, I mean, like, they had a lot of their engine going, but I don't know. Like, maybe that was a bit preemptive, because they had, like, Frost as well in Grave to, like, draw and maybe, like, another interruption, so... I don't know. I feel like that was a bit of an early scoop, but moving on to game three now, uh, we're going to go ahead and see the live tone player opting to go first again. So they go first all three games here. The opening hand going first is going to be, oh goodness, Valor, the Brick, <laughs> uh, Reborn, Droll, Ash. So just no plays. And then we're going to see the Striker opening hand going second to be a Widow Anchor, Terraforming, Ash, Desires, and Eagle Booster. It's crazy how like, consistent some of these decks are, and then just like Brick. like Same thing with like Prank Kid. Um, but yeah. Pretty actually, they don't have a starter yet either. I mean, they have desires and like the draw for turn, but yeah, they're just gonna pass. Uh, they draw shark cannon, so they are going to terraforming that's gonna search for area zero, and then drill is gonna be dropped. And now they can't find a starter either, so play is gonna pass back. Uh, they set two, and then they draw into secret password. Pretty good, although I think the opponent has the read that they just bricked, so this is never gonna be resolving. Uh, secret password effect, uh, that's going to go and search, uh, maybe just hit the uh, sunny stitch. I mean, probably good to like cut off the engine, right? Because like they were not playing last turn, but they do choose to let this resolve. That's pretty interesting. Um, maybe they are just going to negate this with like anchor, but then you run the risk of them having like the frost in hand because like they could have had frost in hand as part of their brick. Like, one of these could have been easily been a Frost, and they would just pass the turn all the same. So I'm kind of surprised that they let this go through without ashing any of it. Maybe they're playing around Gamma. So they're going to go ahead and normal summon out Lilla here, and then use the effect. So that's going to summon out the Frost. So they're letting all of this go through. They're going to go for Sky Cavalry. So trying to wipe the board here, but uh, Widow Anchor is going to trade for one of the Zeus activations. So they're just going to go into Zeus here. I think they're comfortable doing that because they have Reborn, like if their board gets wiped. So they're going to Zeus, they're going to chain Widow Anchor, and they're just going to let this resolve, which is fair enough. Uh, and then they are going to pass. Uh, they draw another Ash Blossom for turn. Yeah, like none of this would have happened if they just like Ash either the Sunny Snitch or the Secret Password. But yeah, they still have plays though. They have like Area Zero Desires. So area zero effect, that's going to go ahead and target the shark cannon that's set. And then they're going to chain the shark cannon. That's going to go ahead and hit uh, the Lilla out of graveyard. Or, or they're going to advance the frost, actually. 
Um, yeah, I forgot the frost was engraved. Yeah, so they want to make sure they don't draw off this. So they hit ready, which is pretty good. And then they're going to go ahead and put those back. So, yeah, now the Reborn is still alive, at, at least for them. I mean, they can't, like, know about Reborn. So, like, this was obviously the better hit. But, yeah, we'll see. We'll see how much work they can get done this turn with their engine. So they're going to North summon out Ray, and then link into Hayate, and then go to the battle phase. They're going to attack directly, and then they'll just take it. So Striker's going to send an engage. So yeah, here they get a lot of value off this engage. So they're going to go ahead and Kagari to add back the engage. They're going to chain Infect Veiler, they're going to chain Eagle Booster, and again, this is like the control matchup, so uh, Eagle Booster shines a lot here. So going to add back the engage. And then they're going to activate Engage. Uh, they're going to chain Ash to that. And now they are going to Desires. So Desires effect is going to banish 10. Let's see what gets banished here. They draw Des er, Area 0 DD Crow, so not the greatest. Um, nothing too out of the ordinary here. Both players playing Ghost Bell, which is pretty fascinating. Uh, also, DD Crow will be good into the Monster Reborn that is going to happen next turn, most likely. Uh, or... Yeah, it's probably going to be Reborn next turn just to get back into the engine. So, end phase, Shizuku. Um, they're thinking at the end of main phase if they want to Zeus swipe. They're going to choose not to. So maybe they actually don't Reborn next turn. And they just like play with Zeus for a little bit more. They're going to grab Hornet Drones. And then they're going to pass. Strikers up a lot of like cards here. Just in general. Because yeah, they're playing with a blank essentially. Uh, Droplet going to be the top deck here. So I wonder if they, like, again, try and push with their uh, Live Twin Links, or if they just go and attack with Zeus. Uh, they are going to Reborn. They're going to go ahead and target Ray actually. So that's a that's an interesting line to play for sure. So this actually does play around DD Crow, because you can't DD Crow your own stuff. I mean, not that you would really want to. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, now this allows them to just attack over the Shizuku. And cut off the floating. But I mean, they have Hornet Drones anyways. So like, I'm not sure if that's the greatest. I, that just means that they're going to plan on like Zeus swiping the Hornet Drones. But if you do that, then the Area Zero gets back into the engine. So it's just like, it's not the greatest. Um, yeah, they're not in a great position just in general. So they end up bringing back Ray. I wonder if they're playing any like cool text in the extra deck. So Zeus going to attack into Shizuku. They were probably expecting them to target the Lilla here. Uh, and like they were waiting for the crow, but yeah, gonna go ahead and attack Ray. Imagine if they Ray effect. Uh, gonna go and just pass here. They draw imprint for turn. So yeah, I mean the Hornet drones. Like either you wipe there, or you don't. So they're like just, just gonna get back into the engine regardless. So yeah, not sure if that was like the best play. But they're gonna go ahead and set imperm and then target it with the area zero. Uh, they're going to grab Afterburner off of that. So this is going to just force the, or clear the Zeus anyways. Yeah, you can even like put your own Ray back in the grave if you really wanted to. But Oh, actually, and that's just going to be it. So we're going to see a concession from the Live Twin player. So yeah, Striker is going to be winning that one 2-1. to one. Yeah, I mean, the Striker players are so far ahead. Like, they have nothing really. Uh, they could have said Droplet, but I mean, they were planning on Zeus swiping. So I guess it makes sense they wanted to keep it. Um... Plus, like, even if they did set it, you know, it was just going to be... It was just going to lose out to the Afterburner anyway. Um, yeah, like, if they Reborn targeted their Lilith to get back into the engine, they had Crow for it. Um, it just was not a great scenario. Maybe going for Zeus, like, wasn't the play. Like, when they had just, like, Widow plus Shark Cannon set. Perhaps, like, you just try and play your engine. I'm, like, really surprised that, you know, them not ashing, like, didn't end up getting punished at all. Like, they, they were totally fine with it. Um, so yeah, it worked out for them because like they drew their engine cards and like their area zero and desires got them uh, to where they needed to be. Um, so like they they were in a good position. Yeah, but yeah, that's gonna be it. So thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, and like, comment, and subscribe if you did enjoy. Uh, feel free to join my Discord if you want to submit uh, replays for this series. And until next time, I'll catch you in the next video. See you guys.